Hey everyone, Josh Ring here. Welcome back to my Fourscore mini series where I'm diving into various components of Fourscore and reading music from your iPad. Today we have a really practical uh, topic with Fourscore that is how to stay organized. When you have hundreds and thousands of scores in Fourscore, how do you keep track of it all? How can you find something that you're not sure what it's called anymore? Or if you have a lot of performances in a row, how do you keep things organized for each performance so that your music is in order? ready to go for each performance. And before we dive in, I have a gift for you for hanging out with me today. This is my music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free. Wherever you are in your musical journey, you'll find it helpful to unpack and how to deal with music even better. It'll help you create better music, believe in yourself, and share your gifts with others. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are in Fourscore, and I actually wanted to start with how do we get music in for a score to begin with? So there's a few different ways. The first is somebody might airdrop a piece of music to you so you can import it from there. Uh, what might happen is maybe they email it to you. And so here I have an email and if we open up the PDF with a piece of music, at the top, mine says open in Fourscore because I open so many things in Fourscore. But if it doesn't, you can always click on the share button, this box with an arrow sticking up. And then you could, should be able to scroll through some of your apps until you find four score. And then when you tap on it, there it is. Now it opens in four score for us. Another way you might import a score into four score is if you have a physical copy, you might want to scan it. So if you open up the toolbox in the top right under add scores, you can click on scan. And this allows you to edit pictures or take a picture and then upload it from there. Instead of the scan in Fourscore, I actually prefer to scan it with an app called Faster Scan. So this allows you to take a picture just like you would. And I suggest you find a well-lit area to do this. Have the light off to one side, don't have a big shadow. And the reason I love Faster Scan is you can see these red lines allow me to get it positioned just right so that everything's lined up. You can see I'm messing with the yellow lines. That allows me to mess with each side, or I can mess with here the green corners, and this allows me to mess with the corners themselves to get it perfectly lined up. From there, I can choose where I want it in the original color or black and white, which normally you'd want black and white, and then you can edit the brightness from there. Once you've scanned all the pages and you're satisfied, you can name your document. So I'm just gonna call it name for now. After you've named it, you can choose to share it. And here you're gonna wanna hit open in and you're gonna wanna open as a PDF. And then from there you can choose to share it to Fourscore. So once we've imported something in Fourscore, we can get to work with organizing it from the get go. So if I tap in the middle, it'll open up the uh, toolbar at the top. If I tap in the middle, it'll open up this properties panel. So I have various things I can label, I can organize it with set list, add audio, etc. So the first thing I might do is label the composer. So if I just start typing, this one was by Brahm, so I can put that as composer. And then I have some options for genre, tags, labels, etc. cetera. Uh, personally, when I get a new piece of music, I just make the difficulty the max. And as I get more comfortable, I can lower the difficulty. Uh, if I have an idea of how long the music is, I can input that under time. And the key I can put in, right? I can scroll through and find what key we're in. If I need to have sharps or flats, I can scroll that or major or add the minor. All right, so here we have a piece in F. Uh, personally, the default genre tags, labels, etc., don't me do much for me. So if you actually tap on those, you can relabel those to anything you want. So let's say, uh, instead of reference, I might say what instrument this is for. So, you know, if you're, you're a multi-instrumentalist, maybe that's helpful if you play saxophone, flute, and clarinet, and you can keep track of what instrument you're playing. Or maybe you want to label it by what uh, ensemble, so you could put like orchestra, even though this isn't for orchestra or something. All right, so if you, you're more than welcome to change those labels if that's more helpful for you. What's great about taking just a few seconds to fill out a few labels for each score is it'll help you find those faster. So if I exit out of this, go to the half note in the top left, I have composers up here. Uh, so say I go into that Brahms category, I knew the piece was by Brahms, but I didn't remember which one. Now I have the Brahms piece and it's telling me a little bit of information right there about it. Uh, let's say I wanted to say, look for my stuff. So I could go down to my category, so I can search by what's the title, how new is the piece, uh, what have I, have I rated it, difficulty, etc. Uh, and I even have here instruments, since we renamed one of those sections to what instrument is it for. 
Same kind of thing at the top here. I have genre and tags. And since we renamed one of them to ensemble, I can search for, hey, what is my like orchestra stuff? Another helpful thing to give you uh, some ideas, I have some genres that I have for hymns here. So when I go into hymns, I have a bunch of uh, different hymnals that I've used throughout my career. So all of the hymns are in this genre, but you can see some of them are from various like United Methodist hymnals, so Lutheran hymnal, Presbyterian hymnal. So I have some options there. Another idea for tags is I have a whole tag for my Christmas music. So things that I've done for Christmas music that I use often are there. I can even search by certain things. So if I go into the search, if I tap on my filters, I can add various filters based on, well, I know it's a certain to him or I know various things. Uh, so I can add some filters there. Or if I just search by say, what's it's a classical something I know. So I have some pieces that are, are classical that I could search through and it does things besides just title because we don't always remember the titles. Once we've labeled everything from the properties panel that we'd want, we can go into set lists, which is a great place to organize your music based on maybe your performance or for each private lesson that you have. You can organize the music so that uh, the scores you need for that particular event or ensemble or lesson are in order. I even have a folder of accompanying students since I do so much accompanying with a lot of students. If you don't have any set lists, you can exit out of that. And then in the top left are these three lines. If you click on that, you'll open up the set lists pane. And from here, same kind of thing. You can uh, go into any set list you might want to see, such as maybe the Messiah. I'm going to perform that in order. Or let's say I want to make a new set list. So in the top right of the set list pane is this plus symbol. So if I tap on the plus symbol, it'll let me create a new set list. So I'm just going to call it new set list. And within this little box, if I tap on the right side of it, you see I'm moving this icon back and forth. If I have it here where the thicker bar is at top, that means I'll add the set list to the top versus adding it to the bottom. And when you have a lot of set lists like I do, you're going to want to probably add it to the top since the reason you're creating this new set list is you're probably going to use it soon. So there we have the new set list. There's nothing in it right now. So I can add this score one of two ways. One, I can click on this plus symbol at the top right of this pane. And there I have all of the scores in my library. So we just made that Brahms piece. So I can go in and click on the Brahms piece and now it's added. A second way to show you, if you go back into the properties pane, right? And then if you go to set lists, we have that new set list. We can just click it there. So you can uh, add a bunch of scores within the set list, or if you are in a current score, you can add it from there. I mentioned folders earlier. I have this folder full of a bunch of accompanying that I do. If you want to create a folder for uh, a few set lists that might be grouped together, you're going to, in the set list pane, click on edit. And now the plus symbol turns into a folder with a plus symbol. So then you can click on that. And now you have a new folder. So you might use folders for, say, each ensemble you're in. Maybe you have a jazz band folder or an orchestra folder. And then you can create set lists within here, say for the uh, January concert, you're gonna have a set list for the January one. So now you can have uh, your scores in order for the January performance. And now you have your folder for your entire ensemble. A further way you might organize your music is what is known as library. So if I click on this half note here and I go out at now the top left of the composer pane, is this set of libraries, which is another great way to organize your music. Here I have, uh, for example, different ensembles you might be a part of. So let's say I wanted to go to uh, what what might I have for my organ. Say I'm, I have, I'm a multi-instrumentalist and I wanna have different libraries based on what instrument it's for. So that's one way. If you wanna add music to that, go back to all libraries. Let's go back to that uh, new piece we were working with. If we wanna add that to various libraries, you can and the left side now go to libraries. You can add it to multiple libraries depending on what you might want to use with this. Since this is a piano piece and it's uh, an accompaniment, uh, I might add it to both of those. All right, so now that you have your score all ready to go for yourself, maybe it's time to share it with someone else. So there's a few ways you can go about doing this. If you tap on and bring up the properties panel, you can tap on this little arrow in the top right and you'll be able to share with that version. And you can share as a regular PDF, an annotated PDF, meaning that it's still a PDF, but any markings you added are permanently on there. Or this uh, 4SC is a four score file. So that way all the annotations you made will be erasable for them, which is nice. So a few ways to share there. 
Another way, if you go into the toolbox under edit this score is share. So you'll be able to share from there as well. Or if you have your iPad sideways, a final way to share is that this squiggle looking thing that if you tap and hold on that, you'll be able to pick something besides what's currently probably annotate for you. If you go down to share, a final way to share is if you tap the three dots, you'll be able to share from this share button. Related to sharing an individual score, let's say you wanted to share an entire set list. So if you go into your set list, if you tap on edit, you can then tap on the one you wanna share and you have some options kind of here in the middle and over on the right is this share button. So you'll be able to share all sorts of things. So the set list only include the scores. You have a bunch of options for sharing your set lists. Let's say you didn't want to share the entire set list. So if you open up the set list, you can tap on edit. And from there you can select, say there's only a handful of scores that you wanted to share. So if you, once you've selected those, you can hit share. And same kind of thing, you can share your scores from there. So under edit, this score is crop. If you tap and hold, you can click on the learn more. If you ever forget about crop, this is a place to come and learn more about it. Once we hit crop, we get this option. So what happens if we tap and hold with two fingers, we can move in or out and the kind of the box around the, the perimeter is what will be shown versus not. Uh, so here we go through and decide how much are we gonna show or not. Uh, and then if the we're satisfied with our cropping, at the top is the, the arrow to the left and to the right. If we go to the right, we can go to the next page and it'll just crop it for us. And so we can keep zooming in with each subsequent page. And if we get to a page like this one, where they didn't do a great job scanning it in the first place, you can see it's not lined up very well, right? If I look at the right, the music's almost at the bottom on the left touching and at the top, it's, it's quite far away. So at the bottom is this rotate icon. So I can rotate a little more to the right. That way when I zoom in, it's a little more centered. Uh, lined up quite nicely and aligned really well. So then once we're done, we can hit crop. All right, if I have a piece of music like this one that's fresh from the computer, I didn't even have to scan it. It's straight uh, printed to PDF. If I go into crop mode at the bottom left, I can crop all pages automatically. And I'll, this is really helpful. Uh, I'll crop all pages automatically. We'll hit crop. And as I go through, you can see it's really nice and zoomed in. I did it, it did it all for me. And that's really nice when you have something that's straight from the uh, music notation software. You don't have to go through yourself. Another helpful tool is what's known as a bookmark. So let's say I have a very large score such as this one. This is the Messiah, Handel's Messiah, that has 250 pages. And if I'm trying to scroll along the bottom to find an exact page, it's gonna take me a long time to find exactly like page 134 or something, right? Well, that'll take a long time. So what I'm gonna suggest is we create bookmarks. So if you tap and go into the bookmark pane, which is this open book on the top left, if I click on that, I open up the bookmark tab. And just like all the others, if I tap the plus symbol, I'm gonna create a new bookmark. So let's label it first. So this was uh, movement three. And it was every valley, so I'll just put every valley. All right, so, so once I've put in every valley, then I can, if I know the page numbers, I can do that. But what's nice down here in the, the bottom, if I just keep, keep hitting to the right, it'll keep going and it'll change those page numbers for me. And if I've gone too far, I can go back one and it'll just take the page numbers back to 13 instead of 14 where I needed when it, it goes to the next one. So once I've done that, I can hit save. Now I have a new bookmark for every valley. And the nice thing is, if I go into and search for that score, so it was three, every valley, there it is. And in parenthesis, it shows what the, the title of the overall score it's from. And the nice thing here is that it has some of the information, right? It starts on page eight, goes to page 13. It's by Handel, it's the Shermer edition. Uh, and I can now add it to my Messiah set list. So there I go, I have an entire set list and I can add my bookmark to that. So when I go back to the set list for the Messiah, down at it at the bottom, there it is. If I tap and hold, I can move it around. If I tap on edit, if I click on it, what I really like to do is instead of moving it around, if I'm moving all the way to the top, I can just cl click on the ones I want to be at the top. And then at the top, I have some options. I can hit move and now I can put it at the top. Another great feature is links. And this is when you have a score like this where you have uh, a first and second ending, but 
To go back, you have to go back multiple pages. So when you use links, that's at the top right under edit this score is links. And this allows you to tap where the you're gonna hit the button on the left. So if I hit that blue button, it'll take me then to what's on the right is this orange. So when I hit save, I'm ready to go. So as I'm going along, I get to the first ending and I can hit this blue circle and that'll take me back to the first page. And as I go along, then I can hit the second ending. Uh, if you want to erase those, go into annotation mode, then there's this minus symbol and then you can get rid of them that way. Because what I prefer to do is what's called rearrange. So same thing under edit this score is rearrange. And just like the other things, if you tap and hold, you can do learn more. So when I go into rearrange, I can move pages around. Let's say they, they put them in the wrong order when they sent them to me, or maybe they were sideways. Now I got to put them right side up so I can rotate a page. Uh, or let's say like this, I can hit the plus symbol and it'll duplicate that page. And what's nice now is that it'll say one, two, or three, depending on what page it is. So then I can put them in order. That way, when I get to the end of the score, instead of hitting back twice or trying to hit that blue circle, I can just move forward, right? And so to remind myself, I like to use annotations and I can get a pen. I can use, I like to use the big red pen and then I like to use that highlighter to, to remind myself, don't go there. I can even like get a big arrow, remind myself maybe with a green, keep going forward or something. And so when I go to the next page, I got to remember, don't play that stuff at the top. So I'll same thing, get a big red pen and blot that out and get a highlighter, erase that. And maybe I wanna get a big green to remind myself there, you, that's where you go, right? And now when I get to what was the first and second ending, I can then say, hey, don't play that first ending, we're gonna block that out. Now I know I can say, go straight to the second ending. So I like the rearrange more than the links. As I'm going through, I can just keep hitting to the right, especially with a page turner. I don't have to worry about hitting back a bunch of times or hitting all of a sudden with my finger to hit a blue circle, tiny blue circle at that, uh, and sometimes missing. The final thing that's helpful to do is use multiple tabs. There's, uh, this is when you can have, uh, like a, in a window browser, you can have multiple tabs. So if you go to the top, this three dots do quite a few things. So I can do new tab. When you do it this way, it'll just duplicate whatever your current score was. But maybe I don't wanna do that. So if I go into the search mode, let's say I have this technique routine that I'm gonna do as my warm up. I'm gonna use this all the time. Every time I go practice, I'm gonna warm up with this. So what I might do, let's say there's a sight reading. I'm gonna sight read, try to sight read every single time. So if I swipe to the left, all of a sudden this, these eyeglasses pop up. And if I hit plus, I now have the tabs. I have that technique routine. Maybe I'm going to warm up with that. I'm going to start with some sight reading next. And then there's this new tab. If I hit new tab, it'll just duplicate whatever the previous page was. And then I can say work on my current song. So now I have the tabs of my warm up routine. I have some sight reading I'm going to do and the song I'm currently working on. The final way to add a tab, a new tab besides these three dots or while you are searching for something and scrolling to the left, right? The final way to add a new tab is if you go into settings down at the bottom, we have settings and then we have under controls, uh, that's under appearance. And then I can have this always show the tab bar. If I have that tab bar open, no matter what I'm doing, I'll always have that tab open. Thanks everyone, I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions on Fourscore or even just anything general with reading music from your iPad, just let me know in the comments below. And before you go, just don't forget to check out my free music theory survival guide at joshring.com free. So thanks guys.